In today's video, we'll take a look at some of the best practices and settings for creating stacked star trail photography. There's nothing worse than driving to a remote location only to find out you don't have everything you need. Let's take a look at the essential items you'll need for a successful shoot. You may be laughing, but I've walked out of the door without my camera on more than one occasion. A good sturdy tripod is a must. If your camera moves, your shots will not line up in post. Next, you'll want a cable release with a lock button. This will allow you to take your images one after another, as long as the button is pressed and locked. A flashlight is also super helpful. In addition to letting you see what you're doing, it can also be used to light paint your subject. I'll throw a link up in the corner to my light painting video. Be sure and check it out. If your camera has trouble focusing in the dark, using the flashlight to illuminate your foreground subject will help you achieve proper focus. And finally, star trails take time, so be sure and bring a comfy chair. When choosing a night to photograph star trails, keep these factors in mind. You'll want to shoot on a night with little or no moonlight. A bright moon will wash out the sky and hide all but the brightest stars. If you must shoot on a night with a bright moon, try and set your shoot time before the moon rises or after it sets. I use an app called PhotoPills for keeping track of the comings and goings of the night sky. Though it's hard to predict the weather, do your best to choose a night without clouds. Clouds are evil, and they just love to wreak havoc with star trail photos. You can give yourself the best chance of a successful image by seeking dark sky. I use this handy website to locate areas with the least amount of light pollution. If you can't get far enough away, plan for the direction of light pollution and shoot the other way. For example, if you live in Reno, Nevada, and want to shoot star trails swirling around the North Star, your camera will need to be pointing north. That means you'll want to be north of Reno so your camera is pointing into a relatively dark sky, as opposed to being south of Reno where your camera will have to be pointed directly at the glow of the city lights. While star trails are very cool on their own, including an interesting subject in the foreground will dramatically improve the impact of the shot. Look for interesting subjects and imagine how amazing they'll look with star trails behind them. Cold is your friend. The sky is much clearer on cold nights due to the lower moisture content in the air. On warm nights, this moisture can make the sky seem hazy and dull the appearance of the stars. Shooting while it's cold is also a benefit to your camera's sensor. On warm nights, the sensor will heat up and may produce hot pixels. These little green, red, and blue pixels will be greatly reduced if you shoot when it's cold. Let's take a look at the stacking method for creating star trails. Stacking simply means you'll take multiple exposures one after another and then combine them in post. This method gives you the most creative control and flexibility while editing. Before you begin, make sure your camera's long exposure noise reduction is turned off. If you leave it on, your camera will introduce gaps into the trails because it has to process the noise between each photo. Also, be sure and start with a full battery. You don't want your camera to die in the middle of your sequence. Okay, let's take a look at where I typically start with camera settings. Every situation is different, and these settings may or may not work for you, but they're a good place to start. Okay, let's start by putting our camera in manual mode. Set your aperture to f4, your ISO to 1000, and use a shutter speed of 30 seconds. Set the drive mode to continuous, so your camera will take images one after the other when you lock the shutter release. As for the lens, I find that lenses with a focal length of 24 millimeters or wider are ideal. All right, we're ready to rock. Set your camera on a tripod and point it towards the North Star. The easiest way to locate the North Star is by using the Big Dipper as shown here. Next, set your camera's focus to infinity. If your lens does not have an infinity mark, just focus on a distant light. You can also use Live View with the magnification set to 10 times. You'll want your distant light to be as sharp and tight as possible. Even with an infinity mark on the lens, it's probably a good idea to do this anyway, since not all infinity marks are actually correct. Once you have proper focus, switch the lens to manual focus. You don't want it to try and refocus between shots. Once you're dialed in, press the shutter button on your cable release and lock it so the camera will keep taking pictures one after another. Now's where that lawn chair you brought really pays off. I find that shooting for even as little as 30 minutes can yield some great results. One last step. Once you stop your star trails, put the lens cap back on and shoot a dark frame with the exact same settings you just used. The dark frame is used by the stacking software to reduce noise and hot pixels. Alright, that's going to wrap up this video. Stay tuned for part 2 where I'll cover downloading and processing the star trails you just took using a great piece of free software called StarStacks. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, share, and give me a thumbs up. To see more of these videos, be sure and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, see ya!